Jordan. Today we're going to be doing our assembly of our 48 inch contractor. When you receive it on your job site, it's going to be palletized in this manner. You'll notice that it'll say 48 on the side so you know which unit you bought. There'll also be a checklist for all of the material that should be included. Fortunately on the contractor, you could visually inspect the entire unit and make sure that you have all the pieces upon delivery. Well, we're going to go up front and do a unique installation where we're going to be incorporating some reclaimed stone into our hearth inside design. See you up front. We brought our 48 inch contractor around to our job site out front. As I mentioned, we're doing something interesting. We have a natural hearthstone that we'll be using. This actually came out of a building from 1885. You can see where the window was scooped out, but we're using it as a hearthstone. I also took a similar stone and I hand split it. So now we have it in the back, which will form our two legs. On the inside, we're going to inset our fireplace in this area here. So I put some CMUs down here, which are basically cinder blocks, so we can establish a height so our finished fire brick will be even with the hearth. So we're really excited to do this project in our display here in Monroe, Connecticut. And before we get going, as um, any of you should realize or will realize once you start working with masonry products, when you receive your elements and your components to your fireplace, you're going to want to stage them properly. Now there's no right way to stage something, but there's definitely a wrong way. The wrong way to stage is to have all your different components in kind of a pile or too far away to get to. We have our wall sections on one side, our wall sections on the other side, and everything is laid out so there's easy access so it'll be easy for myself and my helper to start assembling the unit. First thing that I have to do is lay down a mortar bed on the inside of my cinder block so I can lay the base plate of my fireplace. Now that our base plate is in place, we mixed up some Stone Age refractory mortar. And what we're gonna to wanna to do before we set our sidewalls is we're gonna to wanna to set a good healthy bead of that along the edge of both the left and right hand side. But as is appropriate in all masonry applications, you only want to apply enough mortar that you can work with in about 10 or 15 minutes. So the consistency of the mortar, as you can see, you should be able to leave your trowel blades in there. And I will get the first section of wall. Line it up on the front edge on the side, put it into place, ensure that you're lined up on the front, that your wall section is plum, not apple, and you're lined up on the back. Pull in the excess mortar on the outside, make sure that you have enough mortar on the inside applied. to ensure an even seating. We'll repeat on the right hand side. I'm preparing for the back wall installation. So I laid the same bead of mortar, which is our refractory mortar, in a contractor 48, that is uh, five buckets of this mortar. And I also buttered up the sides. There are notches that are made on the back of our wall panels here, and that will accommodate our rear back plate. So I'm gonna put that into place, and then we will put the next section of wall on. Some masons, myself included, after the mortar is laid, we like to put a little drizzle of water along our mortar on the sides here. And what that does is when we put the next cement component on, it causes a suction to occur. At this point in our contractor build, we have our two walls installed and our back plate. 
Normally, we would be installing our throat at this point. However, today we're gonna be installing a firebox extender. What that will do is it'll raise the height of the firebox by 11 inches. Before we do that, and as always, we're checking for level, we're right on, and also for plumb to make sure as we continue that we're gonna have a solid structure that's gonna last years in the future. Okay, now we have our extension firebox kit installed, which is the 11 inch rise here, the 11 inch rise here, and as you can see, with this seam, there is an additional 11 inches here. So the 48 contractor normally has a firebox height up here. Now we've raised it up to a full 36 inches before the lintel arch goes on. Again, we're going to check for level and we're going to check for plumb. And we're looking pretty good. Next stage is to put on the back smoke shelf and also the sides which will receive the arched lintel. This is our top piece of the sidewall. The angle on the back will receive the smoke shelf, which is the 52 inch piece that also has the angle on it. And you'll notice that this is tapered. It goes from about four and a quarter inches down to three and a half. So I'm gonna put this up here on the sidewall where it lines up with the back wall. I'm gonna press that into place like so. This little space on the end here is to receive the lintel. So that space is required. So don't line this front face up with the front face of the firebox. Line it up with the inside face of the firebox on the back. At this point, I like to stop in the construction of the 48 contractor with the extension. The reason why is because it's the opportune time to do our fire brick. Now the fire brick would come up to the joint just below the smoke shelf here. So in the next video, we'll do our fire brick and then we'll add our throat section and our front lintel and then we'll start with our chimney extensions. As you can see, we finished forming the firebox with our components. We have our wall extension, our two walls that come with the kit. And this is the section of wall that receives our smoke shelf in the back. Prior to doing the fire brick, what we're going to do now is install the back section of the throat. You'll see what that looks like and you'll see the easy access for me to install the fire brick right after that. Okay, we're about to install our fire brick, but as you can see, there are many options. The first option would be to do tight joints and we would allow ash over time to fill in the joints. There's also a 3 8 joint that you can do. You can do a 1 8 or a quarter or even up to a half inch. The key to doing your jointing is you never want your joint to be wider than half the thickness of your fire brick. The last option would be a herringbone type pattern like this, which is very popular, especially in Europe. What we'll be going with today is the middle pattern with the 3 8 inch joint. Ideally for our fireplaces, which works out great with the fireplace um, flooring depth of 30 inches. As you see, there won't need to be a cut brick on the back. As you do come to your wall sections, you will need to make a five degree angle on the side to accommodate your brick as it comes up against the wall. Always find a mark right in the center of your firebox. In this case, it's 25 and 1 8 inch. Then you mark a center line on your fire brick as well. You start on that center line, work to the right, work to the left to ensure that your joints will line up throughout the project.
As you can see, we've begun doing our fire brick. We had the video of me doing the base and we chose the quarter inch to three eighths inch joint. These are the tools that are necessary to do the fire brick installation. We have our mortar mixed, we have a trowel, we have a uh, joining tool, we have a flat headed joining tool, a hammer, a tape measure of course, a marker, fresh water, a broom, and a level. When you come to the top course of your fire brick, where it's right at the bottom of your smoke shelf, you just want to put a bevel of mortar that I did right there, and that helps the smoke properly draft through the top. We're about to start laying our fire brick on the sides. You see how it comes out to three full fire bricks after you do the rear installation of your fire brick first. That by definition means on the second course, we'll have a half brick in the front and a half brick in the back. Let's get to it. We're ready to install our first course of sidewall fire brick. The way that we begin is taking our mortar. We just put a bed along the wall, just like this. Nothing fancy here. We wet the back of our brick, just like we do with all of our fire brick. I call this back buttering. It's not just me, everyone calls it back buttering. A little bit more. So you have a consistency, we could still see your lines right there in the mortar. A little bit more water. Seat it in your bed, press it in. Make sure you're have nice contact to the wall and your excess mortar on the bottom you can just scrape out with your tool and then continue. As you can notice, we installed all of the fire brick in our 48 contractor unit here. We have all the jointing done, which I did with just a, the same mortar, but a little drier mix so you can work it in with the tool. Just like when you're doing tile, you have to continue to wipe down your brick with a damp cloth and clean water. You do that three or four times and it will come out a bit cleaner than you see it right now. If you don't have an opportunity to clean it, the rain and the humidity in the outdoors will clean the stone for you. Just as with our other masonry components, we're going to back butter or mortar our pieces. And as you can see, your ridges still should be in your mortar joint. So as we apply that, that'll give you a better visual. There yeah, you can see those trowel marks in there. You want to create about a 3 8 to a 1 half inch buildup of mortar. That will ensure that the lentil piece that we're about to install has enough mortar to bear its weight. And just as before, we take a little bit of water and we sprinkle it on to create the suction. As you can see, we've installed our straight lintel, which is this piece right here. It measures 11 and a quarter inches, and it's now ready to receive our throat that goes on top. The lintel also comes in an arch, which we can show on a future video. I did the same half inch joint on top of my throat section here to do our reducer. The reducer is only part of the 48 contractor unit. What this reducer unit does is it reduces the size of our chimney extension. So you'll see that next when we install that. But the same way, once you place the component on top, you wanna go around and you wanna work your mortar in on the outside of the joint and also on the inside. 
It's time to install our flue extensions now. They come in six inch heights, and as you can see, the clay is already fully integrated into our mix. So, as it was just fitting together, this interlocks with the bottom piece. So there's a two inch inset here, and about an inch and three quarter overset here, and that'll allow for your mortar line. So when we install these, we basically bed our mortar here, a dryer mix, a wetter mix along the clay, and then we'll just place them on top, just like this. Now you could stack these up to about 20 feet high above where we have the reducer plate there. So you'd have an overall fireplace height of about 27 feet. Be back with more videos soon, thank you.